Love you too, son. Yeah. Praise the Lord, y'all. Let's give God a big hand. Clap. Amen. For the Lord is good yes. and his mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us stand on our feet with our Bibles in our hand. Amen. As we go to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, and our key verse is verse 33, Matthew 6 and 33. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Let us hold our Bibles in the hand. I can have what the word says. I can have. I can do what the word says. I can do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let us be seated in the presence of the Lord. Give my hands back. Glory to God. As we pray, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we repent for anything we said or done that we end your work in our life. But we ask you now, God, in the name of Jesus, that you open up our ears, that we may understand the wonders out of your law. Lord, we know, God, that you said how you look low. You're still the Alpha to the Omega. You're still the beginning to the end. You're the first and the last, only true eyes of living God. Hide me now behind the cross, God, as you use me as a vessel to give you glory. Lord, we know that the grass withers and the flower falls. But the word of the Lord shall endure forever. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Okay. All right. Matthew 6 and verse 33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. Psalm 90 and verse 12 said, So teach us to number our days that our hearts may be applied to wisdom. Life is like a dollar bill. You can spend it any way you want, but you only get to spend it once. Yes. When you spend money, it's only two ways you can spend it. You can waste it or you can invest it. And say, at the same time, we need to understand that life is the same way. Whether you're young or old, six or 60, healthy, wealthy, puny or poor, the Lord wants you to know that you can make the rest of your life the best of your life when you turn it over to God. Amen. So if you had the chance to start all over today, the best advice is right here in the word of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. We just learned from Romans chapter 12 and 2. And be not transformed, be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So as we turn from the world and we go straight to God, we realize that the first thing we got to do to get on God's way and go down his path is to seek first the kingdom of God. Yes. Now, you may <clears throat> say to yourself, well, pastor, seeking first the kingdom of God, listen, you got to make up your mind whether you're going to seek first the kingdom of God or not. That doesn't mean that he has to tell you where you're going before you get going. <laughs> God wants you to realize something, that you got to set proper priorities in your life. To seek first the kingdom of God. Amen. Everything rises and falls right here in this verse. If your priorities are not in order with life, your life is not going to be in order. You don't have to pray about the first thing. You don't have to pray about how you ought to do it. He tells you how to do it. Amen. Seek first the kingdom of God. You don't have to look for it. The only thing you got to do is do it. Seek first the kingdom of God. The word seek here means that you're actively pursuing or going after what God has put before you. That's the present tense. 
Every day of life, and every day of your life, you need to seek first the kingdom of God. So in order to seek the kingdom, first you have to seek the king. Because you can't have a kingdom if you don't have the king. The Christian life is about more than just accepting the Lord. It's about seeking the Lord. It's not just a drive-through window that you get saved and roll out the door and you got everything you need. Christ is someone that you got to actively seek every day of your life. I can tell you right now how much of God you have. You have as much God as you want. Yes, because if you don't want him, you're not going to get a lot of them. Right. But if you want them and you seek them, you got all the God that you truly want. God doesn't have favorites. Let's get this out of our mind. But you got to understand something. God has intimates. Not favorites, but intimates. James chapter 4 verse 8 said, draw it out of God and he'll draw it out of you. God promises us in his word in Jeremiah 29 13. He said, and seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. Now I don't know where your heart is today. But I pray in the name of Jesus that your heart is in the right place. Because if your heart's in the right place, you ought to be seeking Jesus right now. Somebody clap your hands and say, I'm a seeker. And he said, seek first the kingdom of God. And listen, first thing means putting the Father first. I need you to understand something. When you look at your Bible, I want you to look at verse 28. I want you to see something here. No, let's drop down to verse uh, 30. Look at verse 30. I want you to circle this word in verse 30. It says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which to this day is, is tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? I want you to circle that word faith. Circle that word faith in verse 30. Now I want you to drop down to verse 32 in Matthew chapter 6. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father, circle the word Father. Circle the word Father. Know that ye have need of all these things. I want you to go down to verse 33. Look what it said. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Saints, what, you, what I'm trying to get you to see today. Listen, in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Do you know what faith is? Faith is, listen, put your faith first in the Father. Put your faith first in the Father. As long as you put your faith in God first, you don't have to worry about seeking first the kingdom because you already are. Jesus, listen, Jesus just didn't want uh, just a place in your life. He wants preeminence in your life. And preeminence means, listen, surpassing all others. He wants superiority over your life. Listen, he don't want to be the vice president. He don't want to be the lieutenant. He don't want to be the sergeant. Listen, he don't want to be the second in command. He wants to be the king on the throne of your heart. Somebody say amen. 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 Now, you don't know to seek first the kingdom of God is to seek the rule and reign of God over your life. Yes. To seek first the kingdom of God is to seek automatically, automatically, three things. Number one, you're seeking for the glory of God as the king over your life every moment, every day, every second, and every hour. The reason why so many people have a problem with going wholehearted toward God is three different things. They don't know how to share. They're selfish. And they don't know how to serve. You got to realize something. That what the problem with a lot of people is, listen, you're not going to have no good relationship. You're not going to do great things in ministry. You're not going to go far if you don't know how to share. Because you got to realize something. Listen, a lot of marriages break up because, listen, one major reason, they don't know how to share. Amen. Amen. you got to realize something. Two can
cannot walk together unless they in agreement. Now the next thing that ruins so many people from seeking first the kingdom of God is because they're selfish. They don't want to put God in their life because they want to rule their life. And we got to realize something that Jesus was unselfish. He was selfless. He went to the cross for you and I. Listen, he didn't deserve to go to the cross. He went to the cross because of you. He was selfless, not selfish. Now the third reason why people have a problem with going wholehearted, seeking first the kingdom of God, is because you don't know how to serve. See, the Bible said Jesus came to serve, not to be served, and to give his life as a ransom for many. you got to realize something, that how you going to seek God first when you don't even know how to serve God? you got to realize something, that shared, selfish, and served are the three reasons why people have a problem seeking first the kingdom of God. Every moment, every minute, every ounce and pound of your body and fiber of your body must be given for the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31 says, whatever you need, drink, whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. Yes. See, somewhere along the line, we have got to the point where we think we're going to give God a little bit and we're going to have everything we want when we want it and do what we want to do. Do you know that a royal subject always wants to do what the king wants him to do? Can I get a witness? Somebody say amen. We ought to be like Paul on the Damascus Road. Amen. Let me tell you something. When Paul started seeking first the kingdom of God, everything in his life changed. See, what we got to realize is Paul was on that Damascus road on his way to kill Ananias. He was ready to kill him, take him out, just like he dealt all those other Christians. But when that light shined and blinded him on that Damascus road, everything in Paul's life changed. He was on his way to hurt somebody, but he wound up being hurt because he was hurting somebody. I'm here to tell you that the very man that he was going to kill, he was struck blind, and the very man he was going to kill was the very man had to lay hands on him and heal him. Are you listening to me? When you seek first the kingdom of God, everything, your direction, your motives, your thoughts, everything will change. When you say, Pastor, wait a minute. Is there anybody else? Yes. Moses. Years and years. Kill a Egyptian boy. Run out in the, in the wilderness. Hide. Goes to Pharaoh. And tells Pharaoh, after 10 years of running, let my people go. Pharaoh looked over him. He said, boy, you still got the raggedest clothes that you had when you left here. You ain't nobody. Yeah. Why don't you come and tell me what to do? Yeah. I'm the Pharaoh. Yeah. But Moses made up his mind to keep on doing what God said first. Yeah. And he came back plague after plague after plague. And finally, when it got to the last plague, Pharaoh couldn't take no more. And Pharaoh gave him everything. He said, take the gold, take the silver, Take everything. Just get out of here. But this Pharaoh who was stuck on evil. Yes. Stop. And Moses was seeking first the kingdom of God. The last thing he told Moses, Moses, could you come back here for a minute? Yeah. Moses said, what you want? He said, could you bless me? Yeah. Let me explain something to you. You got to realize something. Things may be a mess. But God will turn around and use you for his glory. Yeah. Don't worry about it. People keep sending you away. Yeah. Sending you away. You keep coming to God to turn things around for you. Amen. Can I get a witness? Somebody say amen. 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 Paul asked God, what should I do? Every day in my life, I say, God, 
what do you want me to do today? When you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, listen, what you do, you don't run your life no more. Right. Amen. 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 You let God tell you what to do, where to go, how to go. My Bible tells me that the word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And we don't know which way to go, but God will direct your path. Listen, my Bible tells me that a good man's steps are ordered by the Lord. Some of y'all hear the thing? Listen, you may narrow escapes in your life. Some of you know you should have been dead. Lying in your grave. But we serve a God of a second chance. Every, every last one of us was like a Jonah. We done boarded the ship. We go on the tosses. But God didn't give up on you. Let me tell you something. He tried to go the wrong direction. And what happened? They threw him off the ship. Threw him in the water. But the whale swallowed him up. Somebody say amen. amen. And that whale took him and spit him right back where they started. Yeah. Listen, are you tired of going around and round and round? Your life is like a merry-go-round. Yeah. All you got to do is start going the right way and God, he will work it out. Somebody, give God some praise yeah. woman was definitely sick and a neighbor asked her whether she wanted to live or die the lady said I'm going to leave that up to God <laughs> and then the neighbor said well what if he gave it back to you she said then I'd give it back to him <laughs> see what I'm trying to tell you today is that woman had a priority straight let me tell you something. If your first name ain't Jesus, your last name ain't Christ, you don't run the church. Everything we do, we do to the glory of God. Somebody get on your feet and give God some room in this house. Hallelujah. And then you got to see personal purity. Somebody say personal purity. Not only are we to seek the kingdom, we also to seek his righteousness. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Not our own righteousness. God's control of us. But his character has to be in us. Not just his authority over us, but we are supposed to have his character in us. Yeah. It's not just an inward experience with God, Amen. but it's also an outward expression. Yeah. When God rules over us, his righteousness is within us. A man's character is a reflection of what's inside of you. Faith is always seen by your fruit. And character is always seen by your conduct. We done got to the point in church where we don't even talk about conduct no more. Just as long as you come in and you get some money, oh, come on in. We love you. We love you. Pass the bucket again. But let me tell you something. God ain't just concerned about you on the outside. He's concerned about what's living on the inside of you outside. God wants to know that you got some inner purity. There's some rules, regulations that I ain't going to break. The heavenly ear, the Bible says, and the sea and eye, the Lord has made them both. Proverbs 20, verse 12. So if we seek first the kingdom of God, people, we should also want to see somebody else enter into the kingdom of God. Yes. See, I ought to be living my life yes. where it's not just my preaching. It's not just the teaching because all of that is wrapped up in the anointing. Hey, but somebody ought to be looking at me and tell about my walk and the way I talk that I belong with Jesus. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. That means if I'm going to heaven, I need to listen. Be trying 
to take somebody else with me. Can I get a witness? Somebody say amen. So what does it mean for us to seek his righteousness? Let's teach for a minute. We must desire it. You got desire. Listen, ain't nobody going to have Jesus' righteousness unless you want it. God's main interest first isn't my righteousness because all my righteousness is filthy rags, then. So the only, listen, the only righteousness that counts is his righteousness. Matthew 5 and 6. Blessed are they. Listen, that's the reason why he says here, seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Don't say that about my righteousness. Because my righteousness is filthy rags. Listen, if you remember, he was wrapped in swaddling clothes in Genesis. <laughs> they were filthy rags because they were the milk rags that they used to clean up the wasted milk in the stalls. Then the Bible says that Lazarus was wrapped in rags, bandages. He said, Lazarus, come forth. But you got to realize something. He used the disciples to take the dirty rags off him. Now Jesus, let's stay in the word, Jesus was wrapped in the tomb. And the Bible said that when they came and looked in the tomb, it's like he just came straight up out the rags. Jesus left the rags because our rags didn't mean nothing to him. What he means, you got to understand that you need to follow him to heaven and leave the rags to somebody else. God wants us to live a life totally dependent on him. You are the one to live right, walk right. He said, the man that hung and thirsts after righteousness, he shall be fed. Listen, you ought to desire and have a thirst like you got a thirst for water. You got to have a hunger like you got a hunger for food. God's just not interested in what you can do for him. Saints, it's all about what he can do through you. Are you listening to me? Saints, it will be a great day when we get this in our mind. The difference between self-righteousness and the Savior's righteousness. After Paul was saying, he said, Philippians chapter 3, verse 5, to be found in him, not having my own righteousness, that is of the law, but which is through the faith in Christ, the righteousness of God by faith. Here's the key about righteousness. You can't have righteousness unless God give it to you. Listen, you cannot have his righteousness unless he give it to you. Say, do you realize that this is the exact reason why Jesus came to die? Because he knew that the only way you can have righteousness is if he give it to you. You can't get it on the own. Somebody say it. And 2 Corinthians 5 21 said, For he has made him that knew no sin. Good God Almighty. That we might be the righteousness of God in him. He didn't know no sin. We had to sin, but he took our place. Can I get a witness? Somebody say that. Amen. You ought to live a way that you can sell your parent to the gossipers in town. You know, a parent tell everything. Everything you tell the parent, the parent talk back. Everything you tell the parent, the parent talk back. You ought to live your life where you can take the parent that's on your shoulder and sell it to the gossip column. That means there can't nobody find no wrong and no fault in your walk. The parent will not be able to repeat. I know we ain't got no parent these days. We just got Facebook. Come on, somebody. We got Tweety. We got Taki Tink. And all that kind of crap. Amen? Let me tell you something. Nobody in here wants your business end on the 6 o'clock noon. We all got something that we don't want nobody to know. But praise be unto God. When you live your life, listen, they can't put nothing out there on you if they ain't got nothing to put out there. Can I get a word? Somebody say that. See, promise prosperity. 
The scripture said, and all these things shall be added unto you. Saints, many times I've heard people preach this thing, but they never told you what the things was that was going to be added. Oh, yeah, let's go to the word. See, all of the things that he said will be added to you. Let me tell you what these things are. The things that are going to be added to you, saints, are the things you set up at night and worry about. All the things you set up can't sleep about. All the things you wonder about. And guess what? They're right here in the Word. So the next time somebody tell you, listen, uh, seek first King and all things be added to you, you ought to ask them what things. Because our pastor told us what things. I'm going to show you the things that we sit up and worry about that God said that these things be added to you. You don't have to worry about Look at verse 19. Verse 19. Here's the first thing that people lay up and worry about all night. But God said, you don't have to worry about that because these things will be added to you. Right. Are you ready? Right. He said, not lay up, lay not up for yourselves treasures with, on earth where a moth and rust do it corrupt. Amen. And the thieves break in and through and steal. Amen. What is he talking about? Don't be worried about your finances. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. See, some people sitting up here, you're worried about where the money coming from. Let me tell you something. God got supernatural finances. Are you listening to me? If he can put a coin in a fish's mouth, he can put a few dollars in your account. Can I get a witness? He said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Here's something else you sit up and worry about. Worry about how you're going to eat. Look what it said in verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat, oh Lord, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. It is, listen, is not your life more than me and the body than render? You sit up worried about food? Well, there you go. You ain't got to worry about finances. Number two, you ain't got to worry about food. Now here's something else you said I'm worried about. Somebody's so glad they're out there on YouTube. See, nobody never told me what the things that would be added. Come down to magnify him. Go to Bible now. Out of the avenue. And let's get this word. Here's another thing you don't have to worry about. Look at verse 27. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to a statue? You all about the answers out there. Add a one. Add a two. And a three, and a four, and a one, and a two. He said, You ain't got to worry about fitness. You got to worry about it. Because God knows, He said, You can't add not one more second to your life. Let me tell you something, and I don't mean no harm when I say this. Big people die early, and skinny people die a long time later. And guess what? It can go either way. Can I get a witness? I done seen heavy people live to a hundred. And I done seen skinny people die at 60. He said, seek first the kingdom of God. And all, all these things. One, two, three. He said, you ain't worth Listen, seek first the kingdom of God. There is something else you worry about. Sit up at night. Watch this, verse 28. And why take you thought for your remnant? Y'all worried about your clothes. Worried about your shoes. Worried about what dress you're going to wear. See, I believe it's a reason why they never taught you what all these things were. Because when you learn what all these things are, you're going to put a lot of stuff that you sit up all night worried about. You're going to go to bed and have a good night's sleep. He said, don't be worried about no remnant. Consider the lilies of the valley, of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. He said, you ain't got to worry about fashion. And let me take you on down here to verse 32. For after all these things do the Gentiles see. Listen to this. For your heavenly Father know of that you have need of all these things. So seek first the kingdom of God. And all these things will be added to you. Somebody.
Somebody give God the glory. Somebody give God the glory. Somebody say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Because I needed to get that. Because I've been a little worried about some things lately. But I realized that you work in all things together for the good loads that are, oh my God. Listen, stop wandering. Stop being here, there, everywhere. Seek first the kingdom of God and everything you need will be added to you. I want you to understand something out there on YouTube and book face and all of that. God will give you what you need. He said, that's a promise. That's a promise. Read verse 32 again. Go back and read it. He said, but after all these things, do the Gentiles see for your heavenly father know what you have need of all these things. And he said, seek first the kingdom of God and everything you need, your finances, your food, your fitness, and your passion will be added to your life. Clap your hands if you hear me today. It's three things, life lessons that we need to know before we leave here today. Listen to me good. Number one, you don't need everything you want. You don't need everything you want. Because a lot of things you want, you waste. How many of y'all can go home right now? You got some stuff in your freezer for the last six months that you need to throw out. The other day I cleaned out the freezer. I can't believe how much I wasted. And this is pasta. You got food, you don't eat it all. You say you're going to use up the leftovers. You don't even eat it. Nope. It's sitting in the freezer there. Sit too long, got poured out. Yep. 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 You got canned goods sitting in your cabinets. Outdated. Yep. Yep. Let me tell you something. Everything that you want, you don't need it. Because you waste so much. And everything you need, you don't want. Like when they used to get your tail to up. I hope I can say that. I ain't never want to whoop it. But the Bible said, you spare the rod, you spoil the child. Not a hell in my life. I didn't want it. But listen, if it don't make you better, it'll make you better. There are some things that you don't want, but you need. Because you cannot get to where you are today if you didn't go through the hell you went through before. Amen. I'm telling you, it may be rough, it may be tough, but it's the only way that God can get the goodness out of you. The Bible said, I've never seen a righteous for second, nor a seed begging bread. Do you realize all the things that David went through, Deacon Hobbs? Do you realize all the suffering he went through? All the trials, tribulations? He said, it's good for me that I've been afflicted. How many of y'all know I'm telling the truth? Listen, you wouldn't know what was good for us until you had some bad. You wouldn't know what right was until you did some wrong. You wouldn't know how to go up unless you've been down. You wouldn't know what healing was unless you've been sick. Somebody say that. And you wouldn't need a savior if you didn't know that you was a sinner. Somebody say amen in this house. Got something else I want to tell you. That God don't give you everything you want. Amen. Some of y'all are a bunch of cry babies. <laughs> you don't get what you want, you get to acting crazy. <laughs> Somebody don't cater to your need, you can't have it. Amen. Well, let me tell you something. God don't give you everything you want. God give you what you need. Yes. Come a time in your life where you get kicked out the nest. You got to go out there and make a life for yourself. Yes. You got to realize something. If you don't work, you don't eat. 
Are you listening to me? God will not give you what you can get yourself. God only gives you what you can't get on your own. That means you gotta work. You gotta apply yourself. Do you not know if you don't put no deposit, you ain't gonna never get a return. You know how many people struggling in college right now? Trying to be all they can be? You know how many years I worked like a broke back mule? To have some training, to have a few dollars in my pocket, then to take it. See, our problem today is that you just think that God just gonna give you everything you want. It don't work like that. You gotta realize something. Progress comes through you going through a process. If you can't go through the process. You're never going to have the progress. Amen. Everything comes step by step. We want to jump off the high board, but we need to learn how to tread water yet. Go through some things. Learn from the lessons that come from this word. Make you a better person. And let me tell you something. He said, let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. Speak those things in your life that are not as though they were. That's right, amen. I told a man out today, I said, you got to see yourself here before you be here. Yes. Yes. You got to see yourself preaching before you be a preacher. Yes. You got to see yourself delivered before you get delivered. Yes. You got to have it in your mind. Because if you don't believe it can happen, it ain't never going to happen. Somebody clap your hands and say, I hear you, Pastor. You got to realize something. It was these two men. They had two stores in the hood. Neighborhood. You put it country, wherever. Getting the message from. And every day, they fought for the business of the neighborhood. One man put up a sign. He said, if you want it, we had it. The other man went back and thought about it for a minute. Made him up a sign. He came outside and put up a sign and said, if you don't have this, if we don't have it, you don't need it. <laughs> Regardless <laughs> of what you may think, that if you don't have it in your life at this time, it's because God knows right. at this point in your life, you don't need it. Come on, somebody. I wish I had somebody they can accept some truth in here. What the Lord is trying to tell us today, it's our job to serve God. Somebody say, it's our job to serve God. It's God's job to supply our needs. Look at your neighbor say, get over it. Trust God. When we got that kind of attitude, that I have it my own way. That's the attitude that blocks all your blessings up. This man was going on a missionary journey. He had an envelope. The man ran up and gave him an envelope. He said, listen, if you ever need anything, he said, you're my friend. You're boarding this boat. You're going out on a missionary work. If you ever need anything, Open up this envelope. The man went out 20 years in the missionary field. That same boat came back. He came down the main plane. The man ran up to him. He said, oh, my friend. Oh, man, I'm so glad to see you. It's been 20 years. He took the envelope and gave it back to him. And the man said, wait a minute. He said, let me tell you something. It's one thing I learned in 20 years. Wherever God God, God will provide. Amen. Can I get a witness? Somebody say amen. amen. I want you to realize something. That God is working on us yeah. in a way that we got to get straight yeah. from the Bible. Amen. And Luke chapter 6, 
you begin to see Jesus. He's walking through the fields, and the disciples is following him. And the disciples is following him, and the disciples reach over, and they grab some corn. And they begin to rub the corn together. And they begin to rub the husk off the corn. And then they reached in, and what they did was, they began to bite the corn. And the Pharisees seen them in the corn. And they said, what in the world? He said, wait a minute. Do you not know it's unlawful to eat this corn on the Sabbath day? And Jesus told me, he said, let me tell you something. Remember David? How David was able to go into the temple. And the Bible said that they, listen, he ate the show bread. And Jesus was trying to tell him that you got to realize something. When you follow me, I can feed you at any time, any place, no matter what they say, no matter what they tell you, whether they like you, talk about you, put you down, when you're sick and first the kingdom of God, he will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ. When you follow him, when you go in his direction, when you go toward Jesus, you can't go wrong. Because God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you ask or think according to the power that works in us. God is able to turn things around. Yeah. David, Thank you, Jesus. on his way in the battle, he's got sent on a mission. Thank you, Jesus. Saul told him to go take care of this. David ran out without a sword. He ran to a village. He said, David, where are you going without a weapon? He said, I need a weapon. He said, the only weapon we got is the sword of Goliath. David said, wait a minute. He said, that's exactly, that'll work. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Whatever your enemies, whatever people trying to pull you away, People that tell you will never be nothing. Say you're never gonna, it's gonna be like your daddy. Listen, you're just like your mama. They say you won't never be nothing. Let me tell you something. When you work for God, he'll supernaturally put something in your hand and fight your battles. You just go. He didn't have no sure. He didn't have nothing. He just ran after God. Somebody on this line today need to run after God. Because God's got what you need. Listen, Lord have mercy. He'll make something come to your life that you never thought was possible. And use it to do the impossible when you seek first the kingdom of God. Come on, give on your feet. Let's give God the glory. Give God the praise. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say thank you. Today, I don't know who we're talking to. It might be somebody out there on YouTube, somebody out there. You may not know Jesus in the part of your sins, but I'm here to tell you, this walk that you're having with God, you may feel like your mama's mistake down by the lake, but the devil is alive. You may feel that success you see everybody else proceed doing better. But what about me? Well, I'm here to tell you, if you draw a night of God, he'll draw a night of you. Yeah, right. Let me explain something to you. I know this firsthand. Had a terrible situation happen in January. Work been a little hard. Fine. But one thing I can tell you, I serve a God That if you don't give up on God, God will never give up on you. I'm not sitting here saying that everything is easy. I know it's not. Some of you may be coming up the rough side of the mountain. You're doing your best to make it in. But I'm telling you today, if you just hold on, 
and be strong. Don't turn back. Everybody's holding on a rope somewhere in their life. But you got to realize something. If you're holding on to that rope, just don't let go. Because you realize if you let go, listen, you already been down. Sometimes you got to press your way. When you press your way, you find out that, listen, things don't always turn out bad. Because I'm here to tell you that God always saves the best for last. Yes. Keep climbing. Keep, climbing. keep believing. Yes. But do first things first. Yes. Seek first the kingdom of God. Yes. It is the formula for success. Yes. I'm standing here today because of this one scripture right here and the grace and mercy of God. Yes. I saw them first. Put them first. And I promise you, the devil can't do you no harm. He come on every side. Let me say this before I... I want you to understand something today. The devil is not God's equal. The archangel, angel Michael, is the devil's equal. Let me say it again. Michael is the opposite there. But you better realize something. That you got God. And God is above all things. If you're not saved, let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, pray this prayer with me. I repent, I repent. of my sins. And I ask you to have mercy on my soul. God, I confess I'm a sinner. And I want you be the Lord of my life. If you prayed that prayer with me, I want you to know that listen, right now you need to give God the praise because you're saved. Amen. Amen.